For this course, the mushrooms you're going to learn how to cultivate are produced by wood-loving saprobic fungi because they are by far the easiest to cultivate at home and deliver the most consistent and highest quality results. But before we dive into growing them, you need to know a little about their life cycle. This will help you better understand the different parts of the fungi you're growing, what the different stages of growth are, and what to look out for when you grow them. Over the last two lessons, we talked about the enormous variety across fungus species. For every biological rule, there is a fungus that breaks it. So it makes sense that there are some pretty big differences in the life cycles depending on the species. But because we're going to start by teaching you how to grow wood-loving mushroom producing fungi like this, that's the specific life cycle we're going to look at today. Looking at this diagram, you'll notice that the mushroom is just one small part of the life cycle of a macrofungi. A macrofungi is any fungi that produces a mushroom. A mushroom produces spores, which germinate and then create hyphae, which become the matted web of mycelium. This then runs through and consumes nutrients in soil or wood, and then invests that energy into making more mushrooms so that it can once again spread its spores. For most macrofungi, this means that while the cycle can continue with the parent fungus, it can also start anew wherever spores land and find the right conditions. Most people don't realise that it's the mycelium that's the engine of the fungi, and that it can live for a very long time. It's the mycelium that does all the fungi's exploration, digestion and production. It's all about the mycelium. The fruiting bodies of mushroom are only an ephemeral thing, and they exist for one reason only, to spread the genetics of the fungus via its spores. Now, some mushrooms are very tasty, some are very big and some are very small, but the golden rule always applies. If a mushroom has some sort of feature, like size, tastiness, shape or colour, then that feature allows the fungi to be more successful and have a greater number of offspring. In other words, a mushroom's features exist purely to spread their spores. So there's a purpose in all that beauty. Now, from a beginner cultivator's perspective, of course, our end goal is the mushrooms. While the life cycle of macrofungi is amazing and fascinating, the details of it can be quite complex. So if you'd like to take a deep dive into the macrofungi life cycle, there's a guide for you below. So go check it out after you've watched this video. In some ways, spores are a little like microscopic seeds. They provide a method for fungi to spread their genes and to reproduce sexually. They're so small, they can be spread by really subtle air currents, and they are so tough they can lie dormant for many years. If a spore lands on a suitable material or substrate and all the conditions are right, they'll germinate and start to grow microscopic filament-like threads. Each thread is called a hypha. A number of them are called hyphae, but en masse they're called mycelium. And once we have our mycelium, this is where things get really interesting. Mycelium has evolved to produce the chemicals necessary to break down the materials around it and convert them into food. It can also use these chemicals to defend itself and attack other organisms, as well as make antibiotics, attractants and flavours. Mycelium is powerful. Remember our pal, the humongous fungus, the armillaria growing and eating the forest in Oregon? You could spend all day attacking it with an axe or a shovel, and you're not going to cause it any significant damage at all. There's so much of it, it's all over the place, and it's managed to survive attacks from animals and bacteria forever. That mycelium is strong and powerful, but that strength and power is pretty much a function of its size. A great big mycelium has a powerful immune system and a huge store of energy and useful chemicals. They can be some of the most resilient organisms on the planet. But a tiny, freshly germinated collection of hyphae, a baby, it still has all those skills, but it's small and delicate. It's easy for you to crush it and squish it and eat it or whatever. 
that tiny little fluff of mycelium has to have exactly the right conditions or be nursed and cared for to thrive. As the mycelium develops, usually it will run out to explore its environment as quickly as possible. If it's healthy and vigorous, it'll grow lots of long, straight hyphae so it can cover as much ground as possible in the shortest possible time. Some people call this the colonization phase, but we prefer to call it the running phase. This takeover strategy ensures the fungi can outcompete any competitors that might be in their neighborhood trying to eat the same material. Once the fungi is satisfied that it's taken over enough suitable material, it hunkers down and starts to digest all the material it's claimed. This is called the consolidation phase. The mycelium has a very focused end goal here. Mycelium needs to run through its preferred food source and then spend time digesting it in order to store up enough energy for the next phase of its life, fruiting into mushrooms. So in time, when conditions are just right, the mycelium will produce a number of small lumps called hyphal knots. But you probably won't see this happening. As you observe your mycelium growing, you may notice its smooth surface starts to change in texture. Each hyphal knot will start to form a tiny little ball, creating what we call primordia. In biology, a primordia is when something is in the earliest stages of development. In this case, it's the very first visible stages of the fruiting bodies, that is your mushrooms, beginning to form. As you continue to observe, you'll see something that looks like tiny clusters of stalactites or pins, which is why this stage is called pinning. This is where the fun really starts, because what you are seeing are actually dozens of baby mushrooms. It's really important that you make sure conditions are just right for those pins. It's one of the most critical points in your mushroom cultivation practice. You'll be trying to create just the right conditions to nurse those pins through that very first stage to ensure they thrive and fruit into nice big mushrooms. So our hyphal knots have grown into primordia, kept stretching into pins, and then, if all goes well, they'll mature into mushrooms. Aside from how delicious they can be, you now know a lot about mushrooms already. You know they are the fruiting bodies of fungi and they exist to produce and spread spores. And what are mushrooms made from? Well, the mushroom is made out of mycelium. It's just mycelium in a different shape and different density depending on the part of the mushroom that you're looking at. Unlike established mycelium, mushrooms are fragile. They typically don't last for long at all. They don't have a strong immune system, and the fungi typically doesn't waste much energy defending them. In fact, making them tasty to animals like us is one of the strategies they use to spread their spores. Just how mushrooms produce spores is yet another fascinating and complex tale, and so we've attached the details of that tale below, if you'd like to dig into the how and why of spore production. It's another amazing and vast aspect of the world of fungi. To give you a summary though, as you can see in the diagram, the mushroom shoots its spores out of the gills as hard as it can to give those spores the best chance of distribution. Some species of mushroom even seem to sporulate together and pulse out their spores in unison so those spores can better mix and mate. For all the immense effort of sporulating and pulsing furiously to lift them into the air to spread the spores, often they don't get very far, usually only 30 feet or so away from the mushroom at best. So, to overcome these odds, a single mushroom may launch over 30,000 spores per second. What? Yes. And so, with that number being released, some of the spores are sure to get away. And get away they do. Spores have been found in space and just about every environment on Earth. So wherever you go, the spores are with you. Okay, let's recap. In this lesson, we've had a good look at the life cycle of macrofungi. 
which is the kind of fungi that produce mushrooms. We've explored the different stages of a fungi's life from spore to hyphae to mycelium to primordia to mushroom and then back around to spore. We've looked at just how amazing mycelium is and now you understand where the actual mushroom stage of the life cycle fits into all this. Well done. This is fundamental stuff and you're doing great. In your next lesson, we'll look at how fungi and humans get along how we have interacted and collaborated for thousands of years, how humans have used different fungi for food, fibre, medicine and more, and also what might lie ahead for our long-term relationship. If you have any questions about this lesson we've just finished, please ask away in the comments below and we'll help you figure out whatever you're wondering. Okay, onward.